Hi, we are here with Miles Johnston from The Basis Project. Yes. Author, documentary maker. Yeah, I'm making a book. Yeah, that's right. I am making a book. Writing it. Excellent. I'm rotting a book. Rotting a book? Yeah, rot. As in writing, as in r past tense rot. I rot some, wrote something. Okay. Yeah, yes. Great. What's that about? My main media is uh, television. I work in TV, uh, do TV news and stuff like that, sports. Uh, but in, in 1995, I was interviewing somebody, 1994, I was interviewing somebody who was a security guard. And he was in a security guard about in one of the underground bases in Berkshire. And the, uh, they were making aliens there. And then, they were making aliens. <laughs> that's the big deal. These are uh, hybridized, um, transhumanized, programmed, generated life forms, and we're making them under license with the Greys and the reptilians in bases in England. Really? And that's when it started to get scary. And I've been doing that since 1994. And I'm on bases one, two, 123. Some some bases are maybe 10 or 15 episodes. Uh, I don't like calling them episodes, but essentially, it's a lot of people who come forward and they tell you something. And I tell people, don't believe it. But that's what they're saying. And uh, this guy was a security guard way back in the late 80s. And then eventually, we, we talked to him in 1994. And he published these big documents, and he published all these things about these diagrams, about the labs in Peasmore and Berkshire, connected to Boscombe Down, a whole pile of the other bases. And that's ultimately why the Ministry of Defence says UFOs are no defence significance, because we're embedded with the ETs in our bases and intricately involved, and then that brings us to a thing called the Secret Space Programme. So everything you've been told uh, about them going to the moon and all that sort of stuff and just about everything they've been told scientifically so that you can't work it out that we can go at hyper, hyper light speeds and stuff like that. They don't want anybody to work that out for themselves. So what they do is they mess with the physics, screw with everything, and that's why we aren't able to have um, what we call free energy transport and for the last 150 years, we've never needed to use fossil fuels. And this whole carbon dioxide thing is a con, and we're being conned and lied to. My great-grandmother died believing that we never really went to the moon. Is What do you what think? We were, what was portrayed to us as going to the moon was fixed up in a studio and reshot. That's what she said. But that didn't mean we didn't go there, and we probably were there a lot earlier. And looking at the technology that the Germans were making, I mean, let's put it this way. In the 1940s, the Germans were making flying saucer, flying saucers out of the, uh, in the Skoda factory in the Czech Republic or near in Czechoslovakia. So they're making flying saucers, right? Okay. The Germans were making flying saucers. Flying saucers. Why? Well, because they, they knew they could make them and they were making them. So. Two or three years after World War II, we have the Roswell incident, and suddenly, oh, flying saucers, and they're alien. Yet the Germans were making them only, uh, only two or three years before. At least they have good, solid German engineering. Yeah. <laughs> and that's because the Germans did a thing called... Uh, they didn't use what they call Einsteinian physics. Because the reason why uh, Einstein's special theory of, relativ of relativity is called a special theory of relativity is because there was a whole, uh, whole court case about that at the time. And so you had to call it the special theory of relativity and not the actual theory of relativity. That means the whole speed of light thing and the whole um, means of what we call gravity and all that, what we're being told as soon as they mention, as soon as they say on a TV program, uh, Einstein's theory, of blah, 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 everything after that point is a lie, okay, because it's fiction, okay? So that's a way of them getting out of lying to you because they're telling you what's going on all the time. So they don't get a, you know, so if you just look through this, these lies, you can figure out what's happening. And is um, this written in your upcoming book? Yes, it's all written in that. And uh, this guy went and printed off um, two three-inch ring folders of documents and lists. I, I eventually get in there as a person under investigation by the Ministry of Defence, round about 
uh, about about six months into oh dear these things i'm in the i'm in, I'm in there as a list in the same documents and um not documents but it's what he was allowed to say and then we interviewed uh, him with a a woman called lisa and her two children were fathered by united states air force personnel and uh, spinning on a lot later uh, uh they now they work in um, complex mathematical algorithms and, and scientific things for the secret space program and then i interviewed another lady in norway and her children were taken by the ets and they're they're working on the secret space program so you know are uh, we're intricately involved with intricately involved with this whole thing but one of the key things math uh, 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 what's his name um, what's his name uh, black no you see i've had a blank Black, that's me. No, 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 no. <laughs> what's his, what's his, I've forgotten his name. Bloody hell. Anyway, the guy I interviewed in 1994, one of the key things they said along with Lisa was the infighting between the authorities, the reptilians, the Germans, the Russians, the British, Canadians, all in there in these bases, all working together, all stabbing each other in the back, all double crossing each other. And that subtlety in the deep knowledge of what they were doing indicates that this is this, that's the way things happen in real th in real life. If you've got one wing of the civil service or one department of the Navy with another department of the U.S. Air Force or whatever, they hate each other's guts. They're always trying to... Who, ne who needs a, an enemy when these uh, relevant um, governmental-type uh, organizations are stabbing the backs out of each other? You know, it's, it, that's the way the cookie crumbles in real life. One, e one element of the civil service will be trying to undermine the other so they get a better budget. So those sort of details came out way back in 94, and so I felt it was worthwhile going, doing more interviews. And, um, and that's how it sort of get, it went from bases one up to more and more bases, and then we brought the Rendlesham Forest UFO events, which is the biggest case in the British Isles that they tell us about. And it turns out that three years before that huge event in December 1980 in Rendlesham Forest with the two U.S. Air Force base and the, um, another base called Woodbridge, the Bentwaters and Woodbridge twin bases, it turns out that a shuttle had come in and crashed into the North Sea and parts of the, um, this is December 1980, and uh, the nose cone of that shuttle had survived and they had that in one of the warehouses and they showed up they got the researchers there the british researchers got a got a photograph of it and that was the known the very front part of the space shuttle the problem is the space shuttle didn't officially fly until later that year yet they had one crashed how does that make sense and it turns out that the, that the runway at woodbridge is one of the longest runways in england and its position was built during World War II, so the aircraft coming in from the war would have something. To, it was as far out as, as east you could get, and uh, they could come and crash there. And a lot of planes did come in before the airport was officially was officially uh, uh, opened. And um, to this, until just before the Elon Musk stuff, uh, when the, until the end of the space shuttle era, uh, uh, with the Woodbridge base had the um, the Bentwaters Woodbridge uh, base had the team on standby in case any kind of shuttles had a problem because it could come in and crash or land at, at Woodbridge or if it came down before um, the um, before it hit Ireland and they did go in one hot mission in all that time from the Gemini and program right through to the whole Apollo thing they did have one hot wish uh, one hot mission it was off the southwest corner of Ireland, 300 miles way southwest corner of Ireland, right on the edge of the uh, continental shelf, and that is where the island of High Brazil, a physical island with crystal cities in it, will sometimes physically materialize in the sea, and you can get up in your boats and get onto it. That's on ancient maps, and that is part of Atlantis which sometimes comes back into our reality and sometimes fades in and fades out. So that's true. The, 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 Brazil, the not, Atlantis story is true. The key to that is the family called Brazil, gypsy families are called Brazil. And they have got an intricate connection with the secret space program as well. And uh, one of the final people who came forward to me 
last July was connected with this whole thing. And she was born on the baby farms of South Africa, not so uh, Southern Africa, not South Africa. And there's a whole breeding program for this. And they go into the underground base complexes and meet the Draco. Draco, um, the Alpha Draconis, is a type of ET which is about two and a half meters tall and eats you for breakfast, quite literally. <laughs> literally me for breakfast? Yeah, just pick the bones out and scoop the skull out with your small fingers. So all of this is going on. And that is why a lot of things are happening the way they are. And uh, humanity needs to wake up very quickly. We don't have much time because these creatures want to make total population control. They've announced that they want the population to drop to 500, uh, about 500 million, max, a tenth of the population. And those left will be drones and there'll be no room for anybody else. And they'll re-green the planet for other species. And uh, we, won't, we won't be around anymore. And the predicted population for the likes of you and me here are going to drop very rapidly. So is that why we're here tonight in London for you to warn? Yeah, we've got 18 months and that's what uh, these injections are all about to, to introduce uh, rogue DNA into us to change us permanently and as in the film... Are you, are you referring to the vaccinations? You might say that. I call them injections. So you haven't had any? I wouldn't have one at all. Me neither. <laughs> and they, that's, this is the whole point in the underground bases in Berkshire, beside the Rutherford Appleton Labs and all that. They were making these man-made program generated life forms for the lunar base. And they, that work was being done in Germany during the war. And then spinning right through to the present day, you have Elon Musk, who came via the German Nazi path through South Africa to establish SpaceX. And the clue is in the X. Do you think Elon Musk is an alien? Elon Musk's got very high-level advanced thinking because he's been exposed to an awful lot of technology, which otherwise, if you look at where it comes from, it, they were working on all this stuff in the 1930s. Yeah. They were working on strange-looking humans in the labs, and uh, Barry King's, that's his name, Barry King's father, found these labs, the closeout of World War II, and that technology came over to the UK, and that is why we have the National Health Service, and it's why we have the heel prick test. When every baby is born, they get the DNA of the baby and the mother, and that goes into a database. And that is what effectively the Nazi uh, health service is all about. Oh, sorry, the National Health Service. <laughs> and this is all about the Nazis. Oh, didn't slip there. All about the Fourth Reich, which has now ended, and we're now in the era of the Fifth Reich, because the Fourth Reich established the EU and also established the CIA. And the whistleblower of that is in a good old British film about faking the moon landing, uh, and um, they called NASA nasty <laughs> in a Cockney accent, but nasty is as close to Nazi as you can get. All these sort of whistleblowing codes are being whistleblown all the time. The James Bond set, uh, when they walked in on a fake moon landing in Las Vegas when they were in that, all these sorts of things are whistleblows blowing all the time. And some of the biggest whistleblowing things were in Quatermass in the 1950s, and that brings in the black goo. And after that, it gets scary. <laughs> Thank you very much.